and high degree of interactivity. It also has our unique lighting technology, which we call SSRTGI. This technology is the focus of our presentation. Uh, what are the problems we are solving here? Unlike regular applications, we have uh, 900 dynamic objects in a single room. All of these objects can be moved freely and affect lighting of each other drastically. This scene unveiled a set of typical problems in modern uh, 3D engines. Most of them use a combination of light maps for static objects with then, uh, light probes or for dynamic objects and introduces a set of problems with lighting. First, dynamic objects stand out against the static ones linked with light maps. Second, if you try to rely on uh, light probes for all the objects, it will give us more consistent look, but uh, there will be problems with ambient lighting. For example, take a look at uh, noticeable edges on adjacent surfaces and uh, light breathing, ambient light breathing through objects. And third, close-up object, uh, close-up shots are still the problem for real-time 3D graphics. And people can uh, notice even slight imperfection in small things because we deal with human-sized objects every day. Why is there no such problems in offline rendering? Well, ray tracing, that's why. But unfortunately, even powerful GPUs can render ray traced uh, images with only a few frames per second and a lot of visible noise. Luckily, we use uh, ray tracing only for imitation of global illumination, and we combine it with uh, traditional analytic lights in order to achieve really good performance. Together with Michael Lubimov, our lead rendering engineer, we experimented on further rendering improvements of Engine 2 render. As you know, uh, during the screen space reflections overlap troubled reflection from environment props. Just for fun, we decided to use the same algorithm for calculating of uh, global illumination. The result was very impressive, uh, making old renders look non-realistic in comparison. Uh, we extended this approach to ambient occlusion, to secondary bounds of diffuse light and self-illumination of objects. And also we implemented uh, band normals technique for smoothing normals between different surfaces. Surprisingly, it all worked very well. We call this technology screen space ray tracing global illumination. SSRTGI. Let me explain the details. We use real ray tracing, but only in screen space, taking obstacles into the account. We have three adjustable parameters. The number of rays controls uh, noise level. The number of steps controls distance of ray tracing. And step size controls precision of geometry intersection. As a bonus, I can enable emission for the objects to make them illuminating with ray trace light. I can scatter these objects and the lighting still will be consistent. This technology works per pixel for any distance, ranging from close-ups to outdoors. So, what are the results? SSRTGI gave us a really consistent and good-looking image. Also, we got rid of long process of light, uh, baking light maps. SSRTGI has really nice potential because it can be used as a replacement for usual screen space global illumination with comparable performance. And it can go even further in terms of visual quality on higher settings. The performance is really good, as you can see here. It's uh, above uh, 60 FPS and it's 150 FPS right now with uh, all the other uh, effects on, on a regular GPU. This technology is already used in production since it is a part of Unigen to Engine for several months. Superposition benchmark is available to anyone. You can download it from our website for free. It works in VR as well. We wish to say special thanks to brilliant implementation of this technology to Michael Lubimov and to the rest of the engine crew for support. Thank you for your attention.